Hello everyone, welcome to another video of Cloud Deep Dive. Before we start our today's video, I want to thank all our viewers for their support. And if you are new to our channel and haven't subscribed yet, please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon to get the latest updates. I am releasing a new video every week on AWS Cloud Services. So it will help you out to get those updates and you will be notified whenever a new video is released. So without wasting any time further, let's start with our today's topic. So in today's video, we will talk about a new service launched by Amazon is Amazon S3 Object Lambda. Amazon S3 Object Lambda helps you to transform your object whenever you're retrieving it from S3 bucket and pass it to your application. So it intercepts your S3 get request, get the data from the S3 bucket, use a Lambda function to transform that uh, object into the required format of your application and then pass it back to your application. So let's understand with an example what we do in our today's world. Uh, we'll take an example of image resizing. So whenever we uh, suppose your application require a particular image in a different format, you have mobile application which require in a different uh, pixels or different uh, format. Uh, your iPad application might require in different format and your laptop will require in different format or there can be any any other use case where you require that image to be uh, send it back in a different format. So to do that what we do in our current world that we uh, submit or we put that request or put that object in our S3 bucket. That S3 bucket behind the scene we can have a lambda function which will get triggered whenever a new object is uh, put in our S3 bucket. That lambda function will retrieve that uh, image will after retrieving it it do the processing to resize it and store it back to your s3 bucket now that's the approach we take in today's world if we need to resize the image or if we have any data which is required in different formats by the application we just transform it into different formats and store it in s3 bucket but the problem with that is that you are uh, storing a lot of data in your s3 bucket uh, which is kind of pre uh, resized or processed and you are and you will end up paying more cost on those uh, uh, objects newly created objects so how s3 object lambda solve that problem so what it does that instead of storing all those resized uh, images or resized data into the s3 bucket it resize or it process the data on the fly so if we talk about this particular example we have s3 bucket where we are storing all our data which is required by our application I have here three application, e-commerce application, analytics and marketing and all three applications require the same data in a different format. Like my e-commerce application require data in the original format but my analytics application require data in redacted format and my marketing application require it in enriched format. So how S3 Lambda comes into the picture and how it will help. So we create S3 object Lambda access point which internally is backed up by a lambda function and this lambda function basically have the code to transform transform that object into the required format so this is the function which we have to write it down which will execute whenever the data is uh, whenever the object is retrieved transform it and provide it back to the s3 object lambda and this lambda function internally calls the s3 access point to retrieve the object from the s3 bucket so your request will come will come to S3 object lambda access point which internally call the lambda function and the lambda function first will retrieve the object from the S3 bucket by using the S3 access point transform it and send it back to your S3 object lambda access point which further send it back to your application. So similarly now if your marketing ap application require it in a different format it also follow the same path but will have a different lambda function a different code which will process your same object or same file and send it back to your application. Now in future if we have fourth application which require this data to be processed in a different format you can create a new access point and new lambda function which will have code uh, required by application or processing code which is required by application retrieve the data processes and send it back. So that is all uh, kind of overall this S3 object lambda works uh, in theory. Uh, let's go to the console and see how it works uh, in action and how it transforms the data. Okay guys, I have logged in into my AWS account and to start with I have created a S3 bucket 
with the name SC object demo and in that bucket what I have done that I have uploaded a text file demo.txt and if I show you demo.txt it just has bunch of lines saying hello cloud deep dive viewers and you can see it has mix of uppercase and lowercase letters. So what we will do in this particular demo that we will store it into our S3 bucket and we'll create a S3 object lambda uh, for the success point and when we execute or when we call that S3 object lambda it will transform this file into all uppercase and send it back to your application. So that's the use case we are uh, doing in this particular demo. So I have created a uh, S3 bucket, uploaded this file. Now the next step, what we need to do, if you go to our diagram, we need a supporting S3 access point. So let's go ahead and create a S3 access point. Create S access point and we'll give the name S3 access point. And it will be accessible via internet for our bucket name S3 E object demo and I'm not giving any policy or nothing just create access point so my access point is created the second component is our lambda function so next what we will do we'll create a lambda function and we'll put some code in there to transform this uh, object whenever it retrieve it will transform that object as well so let's go to the lambda function we'll say create lambda function and I'm giving s3 demo lambda uh, let me note down this name in some text file so that we remember it and use it later. I will be using Python 3.8. Uh, okay, in the role, what I have done, I have already created a role uh, which I can use, or if you want, you can create a new role as well. So let me copy the ARN for the role. And hey, this is, yeah, so it already populated. So this particular role you can create on your own or if you want you can create uh, lambda as well with the basic permission but you have to go ahead and uh, provide uh, some different access depend upon what all objects or what all resources you are using. So in my access uh, in this role I have uh, using the basic permissions plus I have provided the admin role as well so that it has all the permissions. Next let's do the create function. And here I will add my code and I'll describe you as well that what uh, that code is going. So let me copy the code from my text editor and put it here. So this is the code which we will be using and what is doing that from the input request from the event handler it's taking the input uh, S3 URL and what this URL is basically is a pre-signed URL for the S3 bucket access point and which helps this lambda function to get that uh, object from the lambda function from, from the s3 bucket and because this is a pre-signed url we don't need to provide any kind of access to this lambda function to retrieve uh, that function because it's a pre-signed url next from that uh, we are calling the s3 bucket getting the response here and we are transforming it and further what are the transform object we are getting we are sending it back to our s3 object and that input request also send you output route and the output token which you can use to send this transform data back. So let's deploy it. So it's deployed. Now next thing what I want to do, um, let's go to is configuration, sorry, and in general configuration edit it and we'll just increase the time to one minute instead of three second and we'll increase the limit of the memory to 1024 MB and save it so our function is deployed next we need to provide some package so that it can run properly for that what I have done I have a cloud 9 environment where I created a package for this and basically what I've done just to give an idea that I updated uh, with the yum update then I installed the python upgraded it install the pip then I created a python direct uh, folder here in that I installed my uh, requests because my lambda function is using that and the boto3 and i created a zip file out of it for that package and now what we will do we'll uh, publish or we push the s3 uh, this particular import module to our lambda function to do that first i will publish or push it to my s3 bucket so it's uploaded and from there what i'm gonna do i will send it to my lambda function 
so i will publish it to my lambda function so you can say aws lambda published layer version uh, layer name is import module layer and the description and the content from where we get it and all those information we are doing it here and one last command doing it for our function um, we put some error in this error occurs when calling the update language application one the lambda update function configuration function name is three demo lambda okay so i need to update the era numbers sorry i didn't update that so let me do that let's go to our function copy this come back here Sorry, I put the function in as well, which I don't need to do there. Okay, now it's published there. So if we go to Lambda and we refresh it, and I'll provide all these commands in uh, the description so that you can use it, and I'll put this code as well there. So if you see, we have a layer, import layer available there. So this code will be using this particular layer. So if we talk about from our uh, use case, we create S3 bucket, uploaded a file. We have access point, we have a Lambda function, which will be internally uh, calling this S3 bucket to retrieve the object, process it and pass it to Lambda object. So the last component of this is we have to create a S3 object Lambda access point. So let's go to uh, S3 console and on the right hand side you will see object lambda access point and we click on create object lambda access point let's give a name s3 object lambda and here you have to provide the s3 access point so you can do browse and you will get the access point you created in our earlier step s3 access point let's choose that then we have to provide the lambda function you can use some pre pre-built uh, templates PIA access and all those things but since we have already created one so we'll use that one as three demo lambda and uh, if you have different versions of uh, lambda available so you can use that as well based on which one you need uh, next uh, these are optional if you want to set you can set it but uh, we don't require it and if you want to put some kind of policy you can do that as well uh, let's create this oops it has to be small create so our object lambda has been created and what we will do we'll take the ARN of that and we'll try to access content by using this uh, or access point so let me put this ARN here okay and let's let's do one thing first let's access our content by using the s3 access point the normal access point let me clear this screen and you can see that i've accessed the demo.txt and output it to demo1.txt and if i open demo1.txt you can see there's no transformation happened to this file it's the same file which we uploaded it now let's do the same thing by using our s3 object lambda function so this is my uh, S3 API get, uh, get object and bucket. We are providing the S3 object lambda ARN and my key is demo.txt and I'm outputting it into demo.txt. So it will create a new file here demo.txt. So let's run it. And you can see that I got a new file demo.txt and like I mentioned, my lab, what it did internally, it kicked off lambda function, which got the file from the s3 bucket transformed it and send it back to your s3 object lambda so you can see the whole file is converted into uppercase letters so guys that's how it work uh, and if if you want to check the request 
what request this s3 object lambda is sending to the lambda function you can go to the cloud watch and you can uh, check it out there in the logs but i just copied one of them uh, to show you so in the request you can see get object context in that it's sending the input s3 url so remember while setting up this object lambda we give uh, we mention that which s3 access point we want to use so what this object lambda does that internally it create a pre-signed URI, uh, S3 URL, which your Lambda can use to get the S3 object. So it passed that. In addition, it gives output token and output route. So it tells Lambda where you need to send the data back once you have transformed. In addition, the configuration, it sends the access point of the S3 and the access point of your object Lambda as well. And in addition, there is some other information it passes. So that's how the request looks like when it goes to your lambda function from s3 object lambda so guys yeah that's it for s3 object lambda so it helps you to transform your data on the fly you don't need to store the data transform the data and store in the s3 bucket and uh, based on your application need you can actually add more access points and transform your data as required so that's it for today's video guys please let me know how you like it if you have any feedback please put the comment and like i mentioned Please go ahead and subscribe to our channel and uh, I will be releasing next video next week. Till then, thank you so much guys. Bye.